example about calorimetry. Calorimetry. Okay. Yes. It says, what is the final temperature when a 3 kilogram gold bar at 99 degrees Celsius is dropped into 0 0.22 kilograms of water at 25 degrees Celsius? So, in this exercise, uh, they're not giving us more information than the one that you see. But you know that we can use the table that I gave you. Because I gave it to you for a reason. We have to use it sometimes. So, what are the substances that are involved in this exercise? Golden water. Golden water, okay? Exactly. Those are going to be the substances that we're going to look for in the table for specific heat capacities. The reason is that we need to get information from there. So gold is right here. Okay? And water, of course. I recommend that you memorize the one of water. Ouch. Wait. Mm. Okay, okay. So there you go. We have the substances. So what do we know about each of them? We, as I told you uh, many times, many times once, I told you that you have to separate your given according to the substances that you have. So here I'm going to write about gold. And here I'm going to write about water. Okay? What do I know about gold? Mass. I know the mass. That is 3 kilograms. What else do I know about the gold? Temperature initial. The temperature. Is this temperature initial or final? Initial. So that gold bar initially was at a really high temperature of 99 degrees Celsius. So my initial temperature of gold is 99 degrees Celsius. Now, what else do, do, do we know the final temperature of gold? Do we know the final temperature of gold? No. No, we don't know it, okay? We don't know it. Well, we have the specific heat capacity. Exactly. We have the specific heat capacity. That is in the table as 1.29 times 10 to the second power or 129. Okay? You can write it in the two ways. It's correct. Okay? Both ways are correct. So the specific heat capacity is 1.29 times 10 to the second power. I'm going to write it like this because I know that later you are going to ask me where do you get the 129? So I got it from the table, okay? Now oh, you can do it with your calculator, you can you can just um, write the scientific notation 1.29 exponential 2 and write equal, press equal, sorry, and it's going to give you exactly 129. Do you do that? Would you do that please? Just to confirm that 129 is the same as 1.29 times 10 to the second power. Did you get it? Yes. We don't need to do it, okay? I'm just saying that you could do it. So 1.29 times 10 to the second power or 129 is the exact same. Don't forget to write the units. Joules over kilograms Celsius. This is the same as writing joules over kilograms Celsius. Okay? In this way, you are able to notice that joules are in the top of the fraction and kilograms are in the bottom as well as the Celsius degrees. Okay? Both ways are correct to write it. What do I know about water? The mass. I know the mass. What is the mass of water? 0 0.22 kilograms. 0 kilograms. If I give you grams in an exercise, you have to convert those grams to kilograms. The reason is 
because the specific heat capacity is based on those kilograms, okay? So if I give you a mass in grams, the first step is going to be convert those grams to kilograms. Do I know the initial temperature of water? Yes. 25 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius. Do I know the final temperature of water? No. no. I, don't, I don't know it. Okay. Do I know the specific heat capacity of water? 4,186. 4,186 joules over kilogram Celsius. Okay. It is important that you remember this. What do we say about uh, the final temperature in calorimetry for both substances? Constant? More than constant is the same for both objects. Why? Because um, look at what you have. Okay, I'm going to draw it. Okay? More or less, a gold bar looks like this. Okay, and this gold is at 99 degrees Celsius. So you're going to put it the, uh, put it inside a container. And this container has water in it. Okay. And this, uh, this water is going to be at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So what is going to happen? I'm going to put it in. It doesn't fit, so I'm going to reduce the size. <laughs> okay, terrible joke. Hmm. Bueno. That's too Okay, so what is going to happen? Initially, the two objects were, uh, were uh, had uh, different temperatures. Okay, but in the end, this gold is going to release heat. Okay, it's going to release heat to the surrounding water, which is going to make the water warmer. Okay, therefore, we are not going to have 25 degrees anymore. We're going to have a total, a final temperature for both objects that is going to be the same. The condition in calorimetry is that the two objects, when they are uh, combined, when you put them together, they're going to be sharing the same final temperature. And that final temperature is the equilibrium temperature. going to be the same okay it's going to be the same temperature for both objects so i don't know what is going to be the final temperature but i know that it's going to be the same for both materials for both objects okay so the final temperature of the gold is going to be equal to the final temperature of the water that is more or less the situation that is going on in the problem Now, let's define what objects gain and what object releases energy. According to the picture, it's easy to see. What object is releasing energy? Gold. The gold, okay? Gold is releasing energy. Because it's the one that is releasing. And a loss. It's a loss. Mm -hmm. Therefore, water is the one that is absorbing that heat from gold. Gaining. Okay, so water is gaining. And now we're going to, well, to establish the formula, to establish the, uh, the procedure, basically. So we say Q gain 
is equal to negative q lost. Lost or released, okay? It doesn't matter. Just remember, absorbing, absorbing, when you absorb, is a positive thing. When you release, it's a negative thing. So water is absorbing the heat that is coming from gold. So the one that gains is water. And the one that is losing energy is gold. That is important that we establish uh, as a part of the procedure. That is the most important part of the procedure. So we say that Q of water, therefore, is equal to negative Q of gold. If you want to be more professional, you can write a symbol for gold, which I already know. Or you can just write gold, doesn't really matter. And what is the formula to calculate heat? Is the one that that we isolated yesterday. Cp mass delta T of water. Therefore, it's going to be equal to negative. I'm not going to forget the negative this time. Cp mass delta T of gold. Okay. And now I have my equation already established. So all I need to do is uh, replace it by our givens. Okay. So Cp of water, so as you can see, the information that we wrote is, is basically in the in the opposite positions, okay? Because water, all the information from water, I'm going to take it from there. And all the information from gold, I'm going to take it from here, okay? I'm going to basically crisscross the information. It doesn't really matter. You know how to identify your materials. So Cp of water is... 4,186 joules over kilogram Celsius times the mass of water, that is 0.22 kilograms times delta T of water, that is final temperature of water minus initial temperature of water that was 25 degrees Celsius. I don't know what is the final temperature of water. All this is equal to what I have in the right. Cp of gold, that is 1.29 times 10 to the second power. That's why I don't like scientific notation, because for me it's easier to write 129. Okay, so Cp of gold, that is 1.29 times 10 to the second power joules over kilogram Celsius, multiplying the mass of the gold bar, the mass is 3 kilograms. Oh my god, they are rich. 3 kilograms. <laughs> 3 kilograms, imagine. Multiplying delta T of the gold bar. I don't know the final temperature, but I know the initial temperature was 99 degrees Celsius. So I totally recommend that we focus on solving for this multiplication first. In the two sides of the equation. How much is 4,186 times 0 0.22? 920.92. 920.92. Okay, here we multiply joules, kilogram Celsius, 
times kilograms or kilograms and kilograms are going to be cancelled out. So these units are going to be joules over Celsius. And this is multiplying Tf minus 25. Okay, now in the other side, I have 1.29 times 10 to the second power times 3. How much is this? Negative 387. 387. The same way, we're going to cancel out those kilograms with kilograms. Okay? So it's going to give me... Joules. Joules in the Joules. Over Celsius in the bottom. And all this is multiplying... F minus 99 degrees Celsius. So what happens here? We need to apply distributive property. As a reminder, what is the distributive property? For example, you have 2 multiplying x plus 3. The distributive property is you're going to multiply by everything that you have internally. So it's going to give you 2x plus 6, right? Same idea you're going to apply here. Instead of having 2 and having x, we're going to have 920.92 times tf. So, we're going to have this. What color second is green? Okay, so this one, this number out is going to multiply by everything that you have that you have internally. Okay. So 920.92 times TF is gonna give you 920.92 TF. Here, guys, I'm not going to write the units because it's going to be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to ask you that you just focus on multiplying numbers. And then, for example, here is that it's going to be confusing because you're going to have joules, Celsius, and then TF. Too many, too many letters, okay? So I'm going to ask you to focus on just writing like this. Now, here in the other side, you have 920.92 times negative 25. So this is going to give you a negative answer. How much is this? 23,023. 23,023. Okay. Now, here you're multiplying. Take a look. That's why I'm telling you. Okay. You're multiplying joules over Celsius times Celsius. So, what is going to happen here? You're going to, you're going to cancel out Celsius and Celsius, and it's going to give you just joules. In the other side, you're going to apply the same idea, okay? You're going to apply distributive property. negative 387 times tf okay so this is going to give you negative 387 tf okay and now you're going to multiply 387 times negative 99. So what happens here? You have here you have negatives and negatives, okay? Negative and negative is going to give you a positive. positive. Mm -hmm. 387 times 99 is how much? 32,393. 387 times 99. 
38,000. 38,000. 38,000. Mm -hmm. 38, so, taking your calculator, Angie. Okay. 38,000. 38, and remember, we are multiplying joules over Celsius times Celsius. Celsius and Celsius are going to be cancelled out. They cancel each other out, and then this is going to be in joules. Okay, so what is going to happen? We need to leave all the all the TF in one side, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one, this TF that is in the right, I'm going to put it in the left. It was subtracting, it's going to go to the other side, adding. So this is going to be 920.92 TF plus 387 TF minus 23,023 joules is equal to what I had in the other side that are just 38,313 joules alone. I'm going to remove that comma. Now take a look. This one from here. That was, I need to move it, okay? I need to isolate it because I just need to leave TF alone. So 23,000 over there is making a subtraction so when you move it to the other side of the equation it's going to be doing an addition okay so I'm lazy so this is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to the 38,000 that you had there initially and the joules that were subtracting now in the other side they are adding okay plus 23,023 joules now what happens now we have like terms here my friends what i have are like terms that means tf is repeated in the two terms in other words i can add them or subtract them, it doesn't really matter, okay? The sign that appears, that's exactly the operation that you have to do. So you are adding 920.92 plus 387. How much is this? 1307.92. Remember, this is if and this is equal to what I have in the other side I have 38,313 plus 23,023 61,336 joules 61,336 joules so what happens here now? I need to isolate TF. And this number, this value of 1307.92 is multiplying TF. To isolate TF, I'm going to send it to the other side, but now it's going to be doing a division, okay? It was multiplying, so when it comes to the other side, it's going to be dividing, okay? So TF now is going to remain alone, and TF is going to be equal to 61,336 joules divided by 1,307.92. Now this number had, a, had units in the beginning, okay? 
these were the units. Remember that I stopped writing the units to make it less confusing, but I'm going to put the units again over there. Okay, these are joules over Celsius. So what happens here? Joules and joules, they're going to be canceled, and it's going to give you just Celsius alone. Tf, therefore, is equal to the division 61,336 by 1,307.92. How much is this? 46.8. 90. 90. Mm -hmm. 90. And these are going to be Celsius. So, the equilibrium temperature after putting together the gold bar and water, it was 46.90 degrees. So, here in my picture, the equilibrium temperature is quite hot, 47, almost 47 degrees. Yeah, almost 47 degrees. Is the equilibrium temperature that was reached after putting together the gold bar that initially was at 99 degrees Celsius? So basically what happens in this in this exercise is that initially you had uh, the gold bar at 99 degrees Celsius and you put it inside the water. inside the container with water, okay? And as a result, this is what you got. Is it necessary to do a drawing? No, but it's good that you do it if you want like to have a better idea of what is going on in the problem. So if you want to do it, I mean, it's better if you do it before, you know. But as a reminder, this is what it means. I did it before, remember. So you had the gold bar that was initially at 99 and the water that was initially at 25, put them together and the gold released most of its temperature to the water. And here I just want you to see. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,186. The specific heat capacity of gold is 129. Which specific heat capacity is greater, water or gold? Water. Water. Uh -huh. That means because of the great capacity that water has is used a lot in industry uh, to make things cooler, okay, because of it, its great specific heat capacity. You know, this one has a specific heat capacity of 4,186 joules over kilogram Celsius. That means that it requires a lot of energy to rise the temperature of water. But for gold, to cool, it, uh, to cool the gold off or to heat it, it's not necessarily too much energy. That's why the specific heat capacity is less. So, in other words, it is easier to heat gold 
than heating water. It takes a lot more time. And that's why water is so good to cool the objects off. From this procedure, do you have a, a doubt? Just remember, when you're looking for a final temperature, is common in both objects, okay? Because it's common in both objects, you're going to have the, the unknown in the two sides of the equation. So the isolation process is going to be a little bit longer, but still, you can do it, okay? It's, it's just going to take a little bit more steps, but in the end, it is the same idea. Just watch out the sign. Don't forget the sign. Don't be like Martinez. Don't forget the sign. And just be careful when isolations, okay? Because this one was subtracting. When it comes to this side, it comes adding. This one subtracting. When it goes to the other side, goes adding. <laughs> 